Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Dissecting Dandy. Today I'm going to be talking about setting goals. First off, I want to shoot off a disclaimer. I've been working on hobby independent and contract game development for small companies for about 8 years. However, I'm self-taught and don't have a formal education in game design, if that's even a thing. Nor have I worked in the AAA industry. I also have been mostly isolated from the indie game social scene. The main reason I want to bring this up is so if I make up any terminology that might have a different name elsewhere, or I go over any topics that have been considered fairly basic, or if I'm one-sided in some of the topics I talk about, you can let me know. I'm super open to feedback and will forever be learning about game design. The reason I wanted to share what I've learned up until now is because I don't really hear that many people's perspectives on game design, and it's definitely something I'd like to see more of. Last episode I talked about finding reference points. Today I'll talk about using those reference points to set goals for actually making your game. I came into designing Dandy knowing a few things. First off, it's a remake of an older game, so already it carried some stipulations. I knew the genre the original reference and the tropes the horizontal shooter genre carries. I also had visual reference from the old game, which carried some narrative information. No matter where you're starting, you're going to have some information about the game you want to make. The entire last episode was about different ways to start thinking about what you want to make. So write down what you want to accomplish, get it into a text document or on a sheet of paper, and destroy any nebulous abstractions you have floating in your head. Avoid generalizations like, I want to make a fun game, or I want to make an interesting game. Define what fun or interesting is to you and write those qualities down. Overarching concepts like fun are really hard to quantify because they're subjective. The only experience you can quantify accurately is your own. The more you know about what you want to make and the more specific you can be from the start, the more precision we can have as we tackle design choices. If you have a clear initial vision, when you have to make a hard choice like whether you should implement a feature that might take a month of hard work, you can gauge it against what your goals are and whether it truly helps those goals. So Dandy already had genre specifications, and some world building through silly drawings and text from the original 2008 Flash game, but otherwise it was pretty much a blank slate. What I wanted, and the entire reason for me making Dandy, was to address the shortcomings of the original game. I'm developing Dandy to learn from my mistakes. That's my goal. Your goal might be to explore an aesthetic of game design, or to express an idea, share an emotion, share an experience, or extrapolate on a mechanic. The list goes on and on. This might seem arbitrary, or like self-indulgent contemplation, but from all my experience making games, the most important thing I've learned is to have a clear starting goal that resonates with you. Despite being able to make a game without a clear initial vision, it makes development so much easier. The game almost designs itself. Regardless of whether the audience notices you even had an initial goal, the game is more likely to feel cohesive and thought out to them. This doesn't just apply to indie art games. Games aimed at wide audiences also benefit from goal-driven design. So define a primary goal, or if in the middle of a project and haven't really thought about it, work backwards and examine what goal your game is best accomplishing already, and whether you can focus your game in on that goal. Don't post-rationalize because something was hard to implement. Delete the things that don't belong. I said I'd be more specific in the last episode, and I realized that these are still sort of broad strokes about getting started, but I really think the best way to create a game is to fully understand it. And that specially includes its inception. So again, thanks for watching, and see you next time.